request was from someone who wanted to take, would you believe, their family uh, camping uh, over the weekends, uh, over the Easter weekend. Um, so if our discretionary funding is well known in the community and people are going to ask for money for those sorts of things, I'm sorry, but we really have to exercise some discretion of our own and suggest there is an alternative way of doing this. So I'd recommend that everybody votes for Executive Recommendation 17. Thank you. I'll put it all in favour, please indicate. Those against? Four against. That's carried. Thank you. Yeah, four was Councillor Jones, <coughs> McGuell, myself, McGuinness, Warnock and Morris. Those against were Councillors Kelly, Hayward, Giles. Did you vote against that, Councillor? You don't want your name recorded? No. Did you want all votes recorded, Councillor Cook? Yeah, so Councillor Cook's voted against. We move on to 18. Councillor Giles. Um, whilst I support this um, motion... Uh, Are you debate, asking a question? I am asking a question. Um, I just want to know, what is the capacity for this to be sponsored? You know, have someone's um, logo blazed on the shades or something like that. Is there any thoughts about that? Well, we could possibly certainly do that sort of thing. I, I know there has been approaches to me some years ago, probably last year or the year before, the last probably the first summer that we were here as a council for um, corporate sponsorship of some uh, beach umbrellas down on, on the ski beach. So there's certainly an appetite for that. Um, the fact is if we put it in, it's there and the officers can chase some sponsorship and funding. So is someone prepared to move number 18? Councillor Cook. Can I ask you a question, please? Oh, I thought you were going to move I would it. not move a motion. <laughs> an alternate motion I would be happily... This What's is a question, question, please, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, my question is, um, and just a little background, I did ask for some funding to shade uh, the Bricknell Shell. Now, if this talks about Bicentennial Square. My question is, will the shading actually be at the Bricknell Shell? Yes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Now, are you happy to move it? I I think, think Councillor Can I just ask a question? Yes. Is, having um, sat at the uh, Australia Day Citizenship Ceremony and cooked in... 45 degree heat. Is this going to solve that problem so it's going to be fully shaded? Is this enough money to do it? Well, I hope so, Councillor Warnock. Uh, can, uh, who's game enough to give Councillor Warnock a guarantee? I can guarantee it won't solve all the problems, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor, you're moving this, Councillor McGraw? Yes? yes. And seconder? Councillor Cook. Councillor McGraw? Very quickly, Mr. Mayor. Um, the idea of putting this in the, in the line budget is that committing that 50000 expenditure will give the opportunity for officers to go and say, well, we've got 50000 here to a corporate sponsor who might come in for half, who knows, or whatever we do, but it gives us that opportunity. And like Councillor Warnock just point, pointed out, we have some pretty big events in Bunbury in that area, um, and to not have it show, and obviously the majority of those events are in summer when it's, when it's hot, and to not have that area shaded and, and properly set up is, is, is um, pretty disappointing. So, yeah, I think I, I would support this and I would encourage... Um, councillors to support it because we can get, then get that money in there and start getting some ideas about what's going to come back and um, then go from there. So I encourage all councillors to support this. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think a certain accounting firm is going to donate some money. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Speaker against. I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, number 19, councillors. Anyone prepared to move that one? Councillor Hayward. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor McGuinness, all in favour, please indicate. Those against? One. That's carried. Uh, number 20, someone prepared to move 20. Councillor Jones, second up. Councillor Hayward. Councillor Jones? No, Councillor Hayward? No, Speaker against, Councillor Kelly? Yes, Mr Mayor, I'll up. Yep. Yeah, it's there. Yep. Thanks very much, 
councillors, I'd like to support the uh, executive, executive recommendation uh, 20. There's been some discussion on this, and I did the numbers myself. I was a bit disappointed in a way uh, that uh, the IT component of our budget to the City of Bunbury is wrapped up in half a dozen of other spreadsheets. I've got six spreadsheets to look through. But essentially, the IT component of the uh, of the ICT, which is the Information, Communications and Technology Budget, um, is uh, for this 216 1.153 million 805. Uh, and that's a fairly, uh, fairly big whack of funding for this IT. Now, I've said 10%, I thought maybe that was a bridge too far. The 10% would have saved us 115,380, which would go to some uh, uh, way to uh, fund some of those uh, things that uh, we want to put back into the budget. And anyway, I'm assured that it's pretty tight, so I've gone for the more modest 5%, which is $57,690. That is that we can say from a budget of over a million, 1.153 million 805, so I'm just carving off a measly 57,690 easily in some respects. Uh, just noting that um, our budget, of course, in the uh, IT component of the ICT increased 23.52% last year. Modest increase of 2.49 this year because it all happened last year. So what I'm saying is, is that uh, in the interest of fiscal responsibility, I believe that we can take the 5% out. So I'm asking councillors to vote uh, uh, against uh, the executive Executive recommendation 20 that we not support the decrease and uh, go for the alternative, which is that we support a decrease of 5% for information, communication, and technology in the 216 17 proposed budget. And I, in actual fact, uh, need to uh, modify that, Mr. Mayor, because I think you'll find the 5% I was trying to get out of the IT component. Well, you all that move of it, you're foreshadowing. Okay, Mr. Th Mayor, think I'll, think I'll, about it. If I can just change that, supports a decrease. Well, we um, haven't got there yet, so you can think about it. Yeah, 57,690 it'll be, Mr. Mayor, rather than that percentage figure. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker 4. Well, yes, Councillor Jane. No, it's, I'm not, it's a foreshadowed alternative to this one, and I'm not accepting it as an amendment. Um, so we've now, Councillor Kelly has spoken against recommendation number 20, and uh, I'm asking if there's a speaker for the recommendation. Councillor McWell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Kelly uh, highlighted on the 1.18 million, or the, the number he quoted. Um, as we saw in the emails during the week, that was 3% of the operating expenditure. So I think it's better to use percentage sometimes than numbers, because numbers can sound quite scary. Um, as noted, that was very similar to the to the Bustleton um, expenditure, which obviously is a similar size to us. I think it's very, we're going to be, have to be very careful when you're talking about um, uh, IT and dropping numbers on that. It's, to mine, it's the most important thing in business. Um, if your IT is not correct in any way, then it, it becomes a it becomes a big dip, big deal. So there was some spendings there which were highlighted because there's some new technology, new things that were, were required. Um, I really think that we need to stay well. Basically, we've already asked our CEO and their staff to knock back any operating expenditure they can, and they've done that. They've come back to us and said, "Please, well, basically, don't support this 10% drop." So I think we should um, we should support them in their in their request and and go with the um, not supporting the decrease of any or happy with the 10% rather than the 5% because yeah, you don't really want to mess with the IT. Speaker, question, Councillor Morris. Um, could the officers give us some idea in relation to just the licensing agreement price that we have per per annum out of that 1.1 million? Um, is there so any way that we can separate that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I think that that figure was provided during the week. I, off the top of my head, I can't recall. I'll see if I can dig up the email though if the discussion keeps going. I'll, uh, we'll come back to you, Councillor Morris. Is there a speaker against? Councillor Cook. Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, I'll be uh, supporting the uh, Deputy Mayor in his endeavour to get an alternate motion up. Um, I, I, I agree with um, Councillor McWell, but um, we have to make a stand sometime. Custer's last stand. IT is a juggernaut, and we're not alone, of course. It's, it's throughout the world. IT is uh, just sucking us dry of funding. 
um, but um, I would like to see this uh, small reduction that's proposed by the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Speaker 4. I'll speak for, <coughs> as, uh, as has been pointed out, um, when we uh, give instructions to our officers to reduce funding in certain areas, when we're very clear on what that funding is for, we're, we're, we're in comfortable territory. With, uh, with uh, ICT, it's very, very difficult for us to sit around here and make calls on what our officers are recommending to us. And, uh, and I know there's no hint of any uh, mistrust in, in a way our, our officers advise us, not at all. But um, the implications of this without their advice is something that I'm not prepared to entertain. And I also know that throughout the year the officers have looked at this area very thoroughly and have had some savings in some areas and they will continue to do that. It may be at the end of the next financial year we may actually achieve the decreases that have been sought during debate tonight. But I'd be very relaxed, more relaxed, if the officers took that in there, under their wing, and applied their focus on our productivity and efficiencies rather than us set those goals, particularly in this area. So for that reason, I'm supporting the recommendation. Is there another speaker against? Yes. Councillor McGuinness. Uh, look, I, I also uh, think that we're talking about... Uh, setting targets and, and setting goals and, and we're quite happy to set arbitrary figures in terms of 10%, 25% in other areas of funding and I think that uh, 5% is something that can be achieved. I think we should be asking officers to do that for across the board and um, I'm comfortable with the, uh, the amended uh, motion and I'll, I'll be supporting that. So I urge you to vote against the motion as it stands. Further speaker for? Councillor Jones, do you wish to close? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, of course, uh, some of the ICT has been in the province of secret men's business in uh, my career in council. But I do know in, uh, that uh, Councillor Miggy was quite correct. It is the backbone of all we do. We are absolutely reliant on a very efficient, responsive ICT department. And uh, the, the issue of licences will always be a mystery to me, um, but I do know that um, we have to commit ourselves to paying those licences uh, on an annual basis or, or whenever they're due. Um, it's just one of those things that, uh, that we have to do. And I don't want to see any cutbacks in this particular um, area because we are so dependent on it and uh, also gives me an opportunity to compliment our ICT department for the way they do business for us because, uh, like I say, we are absolutely dependent on them. Thank you. I'll put it all in favour, please indicate. As against. That's carried. 21. Can someone prepare to move that? Councillor Hayward, I'm sure. Councillor Cook. Is there likely to be any debate, councillors? Question. Question, Councillor Giles. Yeah, um, can, perhaps I can um, ask. My understanding, if my understanding is correct, that this 150,000 um, in the next two financial years is basically seed money to attract other government money. Is that, is that the case? Uh, my understanding, thanks Councillor Giles, my understanding is that that money will be spent uh, by the city if it's approved and um, it's in all likelihood there will be matching if not more money coming from other, uh, from the state government or other agencies but that money will be spent anyway. But it's an indication, sure, that the city is serious about with us or continues to be serious about with us. Question? Should we ask uh, that it would also be included then that matching funds be made by either state or federal government to complement that $150,000. Uh, if, we, if we use it as a standalone, we could be left out on a, a branch, branch there with no way down. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if um, we'd get agreement from the mover in the second to fall that proposal, Councillor Morris. If you wanted to move an amendment, I'd be happy to entertain it. Sir, I, I would would like to move an amendment to, um, just as we have in the, the previous ones, provided there is matching funds uh, for 
for the amount of $150,000. So providing there are matching funds. Yeah, from either state or federal. Okay. Um, I'll seek a second for that. You're seconding that? Councillor Morris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're looking at a well, $300,000 in relation to uh, the, the Withers local area plan. Um, we, we pretty well know that that's just a drop in a bucket as what will be needed. If we don't get matching funds or any other funds in relation to it, um, we're, we're not really going to get much of a, a plan in relation to that amount of money in which it might go on for three, four, five years down the track before anything actually comes out of the of the plan. So I would I would just highly recommend that we actually put there as a rider that we're looking for the matching funds to make certain that the, the program takes place. I just I'd much rather have it some form of uh, guarantee that it would take place rather than putting that amount of money and we get nothing for it. Uh, is there a speaker against? No. What, what are you trying to Sorry, Councillor Giles, are you? Oh, sure, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yes, well, I, I agree with Councillor Morris, and um, uh, 150000 for two years is, is just about the biggest um, amount we've been debating tonight. That's a lot of money. With us has already uh, had a fair chunk and there are other um, areas, you know, Glen Iris, Kerry Park, whatever, who want footpaths and all sorts of things. It's the most thing that I get asked about as a councillor is where, when we're going to get our new footpath, when we're going to get a footpath. So uh, I'm happy for it to go to with us if the, if the uh, government money is coming because there will be something substantial. If it's only our $150,000, we're really not going to make much, um, much difference with, with just that money. So, and it could be better spent perhaps elsewhere. So uh, I'll ask you to support this amendment. Councillor Hayward speaking against. Uh, yeah, look, I will speak against. Uh, um, although I am hugely confident that we will have matching funds, I know that the uh, uh, the state government through the um, the Southwest Development Commission have about six hundred thousand dollars allocated still uh, to to uh, work with us. We have had a meeting also and some discussions with the Department of Housing in relation to potentially maybe doing some kind of joint venture. So I have no doubt that we will get matching funds. My only comment would be uh, it's just a, there may be, it may be just a, an extra layer of uh, difficulty for us to have to deal with something if we, if we decide that the best way to go is for us to invest our money first to get something done. It might just get a little bit hairy, that's all, in terms of how that might fall out. Um, and the other thing is as well, there's a I suspect that the 300000 that we're committing to now, it is the biggest item pretty much on the agenda tonight. Uh, even if we we're only to get another, another 300000 600000 is not going to transform with us. It's going to cost millions. So you're absolutely right in terms of we're not going to get a lot for a little bit of money, but what we've got is some seed money here to get the process underway. So I wouldn't like to see it um, made any more difficult. Uh, but I am hugely confident. So that's why I'd, I'd be speaking against it. I, th I think it's just creating us some more red tape that we don't need to deal with. And I think that what you're concerned about will be resolved anyway. Speaker, for the amendment. Question? Sorry, just to... So if, if the amended motion was to get up uh, and the matched funding isn't found, does that mean that the 150000 would go back into general operating revenue? And it wouldn't be funded. Would not be funded. Okay. Yep. Speaker four, two men. Councillor Morris, do you wish to respond? Um, we almost were given a guarantee that we're going to have uh, matching funds, so I see no problems in relation to supporting the <laughs> supporting the amendment. I'll put the amendment all in favour, please indicate. Those against? That's lost. Uh, we go back to the original. Is there anyone wishes to speak against the original? I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, recommendation 22. Someone prepared to move that? Is this a 
straightforward. Councillor McGuinness, Councillor Hayward. Just a question, sorry. And Councillor Hayward seconds. Councillor Giles. Um, um, we may need to just change this slightly because we didn't, we've deferred one of them, which number I can't remember, of the footpath one. So oh, sure, yeah. So just to note there that. Were two, there were two actually we, did, we deferred. So, Liz, could you just um, tidy that up? Those two that have been referred back, we'll just go all the other recommendations by those two. And you're happy with that, Councillor McGuinness and Councillor Hayward? Yep. All in favour, please indicate. It's carried unanimously, thank you. And finally, 23. So I'm prepared to move that one. Councillor McGuinness, seconder. Councillor Cook. All in favour, please indicate. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Well done, councillors. Very good. Um, we, uh, you're moving that we suspend to go to recess for five minutes. If Councillor Kelly moves. Councillor McGinnis. All in favour? That's carried. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, five minute break. There's comfort rooms out the back.
can someone resume, move we resume standing orders? Councillor Kelly and um, Councillor Cook, all in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, 10.2.3, um, Cheryl Eccleston. Is Cheryl still here? Yes. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not nervous anymore. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, Mr Councillor, um, Councillors and Mr Mayor and ladies and gentlemen, I'm here, jumped in feet first actually, only yesterday heard about the fact that the Bunbury Council might be considering putting a working committee together to look at camping around Bunbury area. Um, so with my own experience on travelling throughout Australia, I'd like to put forward my thoughts and why I think that the council should look at that idea. Please go ahead. I travelled right in the beginning in 2003 and when I came back I was full of enthusiasm um, came back with lots of photos and expressed my enthusiasm to the Mayor at the time, Mr Castrilli. Um, since then I have continued to travel. At the time I was on long service leave and now I've retired and I'm out there enjoying that life myself. What I do here around the campsites, the caravan parks, we hear lots of times where the um, retired people have all the facilities they need in their caravan or their motorhome. They don't require the fancy things that have in many caravan parks that require a lot of money, which isn't necessary for them. Many have pensions only and limited finances so they are also looking for free camping or cheap camping in most cases. I try and promote Bunbury whenever I can and I hear on many occasions people say oh they come to the west they love it it's too far it's so far they see the distances in between as massive because they're not used to it and a lot of the time I say they only went up north so I feel like we also need to try and promote the southwest. If I say anything about Bunbury, they say, oh, yes, I know Bunbury. Someone's told me about that. That's the place with the long jetty. I say, no, that's Bustleton. So that's another thing I hear on a regular basis. I myself think that Bunbury has a pot of gold right here because we have all of the water. Um, we have, when I look at it, the possibilities of where people could stay. We've got Hay Park and... Hands over all those places that have the facilities that these people need already. Toilets and showers, at the most, is what they want. Um, little tiny towns have done this by themselves, gone and put free camping or cheap camping out, and have been amazed by what the people will spend while they're in their town. So, I don't think that a place like Bunbury should necessarily have free camping, but I think. Uh, a working committee to establish cheap camping areas is a really good idea. And I think for almost no expense to the Bunbury Council, if you use the facilities that are already established and are sitting there being unused at the time, with something like maybe a permit that people pick up and pay for at the Bunbury City Council, it almost requires no work at all. So I just think that you've got everything going for you. There is a club called the CMCA that operates throughout Australia, has thousands of members, and they are currently putting together a website and a list and updating all the time of parks and camping facilities that are $10 or less per night per vehicle. And there's thousands of people interested in that. And there's nothing that spreads faster than the gossip around the camp happy hour at four to five, um, it works even better than the internet. And people get up from there, go back to their van and write down where it is that somebody said is a great place to go and stay. So Bunbury's got everything going, so I don't see any reason at all why there should be no consideration given to a working committee. A great lot of value could be obtained to Bunbury. And the towns that have done it have asked people to put their, all their receipts, their money, everything, even if they bought an ice cream, put their receipts in a bin or a tub or something and have been astounded by the money that's been made. So that's it. Thank well, you. Well, thank you, Cheryl, and thank you for your um, lobbying and representation 
of Bunbury as you travel around. Um, Councillors, the CEO shared with me some information today which I'll just ask him to share with you. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Council, since the, uh, the draft agenda item went out, we've had approaches now from uh, the Caravan and Camping Association, the Development Commission, Chamber of, Bunbury Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, as well as the, uh, one of the uh, private caravan park owners within Bunbury all saying they'd like to be involved in the, the working group uh, and have a say in the future of it. So there's a lot of interest out there, and as we've just mentioned, members of the public as well have, have started expressing an interest, and we've had a few calls already in about how, how people can get involved. So certainly some interest in undertaking the review. So, Councillor Kelly, you're moving this? Uh, yes, I am. And Councillor McGuinness? Is there likely to be any debate? Oh, yeah, OK. I don't think you're going to lose this one, Councillor Kelly. Uh, <laughs> uh, firstly, thanks to Mr. Eccleston for coming along, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, reiterate um, uh, your, your good words there. Uh, this came about um, because, I, well, not because of um, the conversation I had, but I think it was an idea that the time has come. Uh, Mr. Lloyd Parker, and I'm to a lot of us here, um, came into council a couple of weeks ago and had a discussion. I brought him on a whole bunch of books and experiences. He's a true great power. And I think that uh, the momentum uh, that has uh, been developed since that conversation and uh, uh, the CEO put this item on the agenda has uh, well and truly demonstrated that this is uh, a great idea for Margaret. So um, just uh, congratulations to all who have been supporting so far and the enthusiasm. And if we get an enthusiasm from my football team like this, uh, the Premier every week. Uh, did you want to speak as well, Councillor Guinness? Oh, no, I didn't say that. Oh. I don't think there's going to be any debate on this. I'll put it all in favour. It's carried unanimously. So you add uh, Cheryl Eggleston to the list of uh, parties. Thank you very much. 10.4.2. Uh, Mr Bond? Is Mr Bond in the audience? Come forward. Welcome. In five, five minutes. Yep. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Councillors. Um, yeah, I'm Graham Bond. I own the property of 79 Dunstan Street. Uh, in regards to the garage, which has been altered, the height of the garage was discussed with the neighbours fully, and they were fully in agreement um, with those changes. We um, also have some photographs of two other garages, the same height in which we've done in our street alone. Um, the existing garage was in poor condition and was only altered in the height by 900 millimetres. There was no encroachment onto the neighbours' property. And uh, if anything, we've improved. Look at the garage from their view viewpoint and have also had the wall uh, rendered to their likings. Um, we also had a patio erected which needed their approval, which they did, but I would, um, would have thought they would have uh, spoken up about the garage wall at that time instead of leaving it till everything was complete. Um, so we've come here for basically to find out uh, what the ruling was and to ask for leniency in the wall and hopefully we can um, come to some sort of agreement to sort it out. Thank you. <coughs> so I'm prepared to move the executive recommendation. I'm prepared to move the alternative executive recommendation. You take a seat, Mr Bond. We'll, Thank you. Yeah, we'll now deal with it. Thank you for your presentation. So, Councillor Hayward's moving the alternative. Well, thank you. Right, eh? Seconded for the executive recommendation. That lapses pro forma. Councillor Kelly? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I think there's issues here, obviously, with the way our building goes on. Uh, we've got to be true uh, 
uh, not only to the, the letter of the law, but true to our staff when they make these recommendations. Um, not to say that there isn't any leeway there uh, for modification of this building, but in this case, I think the, uh, the executive recommendation is pretty well clear about where uh, the regulation should sit. So, Mr Mayor, I encourage councillors to uh, vote for the executive recommendation, um, and that will test our resolve on these issues or this issue. I suspect there's a few more to come. If it doesn't get up, well, then perhaps uh, the alternative may. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Speaker against. Councillor Howard. Uh, the, the difficulty with all of these things is that we need to take uh, into account the current <coughs> circumstances of each one. And reading through uh, the documents that were provided to us, uh, it appears that there was some good faith in, in the beginning, uh, albeit uh, going about it the wrong way. So now we're, we're stuck with a situation where somebody who lives in our community, in our neighbourhood, has spent a considerable amount of money to build a building uh, and he's uh, become aware that he has no licence for it. And uh, our officers have spoken to him. Now, we've got the situation where we can insist that the building gets uh, torn down at great expense to, to that person, or we can perhaps look for a mediated outcome, which is what the alternative recommendation uh, is suggesting. And I, I also note that our officers have given us a choice between uh, the <coughs> first option of uh, taking the big stick and the second option of negotiating a way forward. And, and my experience in life tells me you're always much better negotiating through things with uh, neighbours and, and authorities and others if there can be a way forward. And I believe there is a way forward in which we can uh, help Mr Bond uh, get through this situation without causing him uh, you know, the maximum amount of uh, uh, pain possible. And I think that we... It, it's incumbent on us to, uh, to have a neighbourly attitude towards this and uh, do what we can to see a negotiated outcome uh, found. So I would strongly uh, ask councillors to reject the, executive, the first executive motion and to support me in putting the second executive motion, which allows some negotiation uh, between uh, the city uh, and Mr Bond in terms of uh, rectifying the problem. Thank you. Speaker four, <coughs> Councillor, hey, uh, Councillor Kelly. Uh, yeah, just, just to say, that, yeah, um, it should never be about dollars spent on uh, something that is not uh, uh, compliant. I mean, uh, I think that we um, do respect all concerned. If we start saying that uh, you have spent that much money on something that is not compliant, therefore you must retain it, that's, uh, that's the thin edge of the wedge as far as town planning goes or as building. So, look, uh, it's a very unfortunate situation. Um, if the neighbour had not complained, it wouldn't have come in. It would have been uh, worked out elsewhere. But uh, I think for the sake of the, uh, the principles around building, um, and uh, I guess there might be a lesson in it for us a bit later when uh, we get out and inspect the completion, get the completion criteria worked out, um, I think we've got to stick to the regulatory uh, side of this. Um, it may well be that the building can be modified. Uh, I'll put it all in favour, please indicate. Those against? It's lost. Councillor Hayward moves the alternative. Is there a seconder? Councillor McGuinness. Councillor Hayward. I think it's all been said. Thank you, sir. Councillor McGuinness. No, Speaker against? I'll put it. All in favour? Those against? Two. That's carried. Thank you. 10.4.5. Uh, Judith Wall. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yes. You have five um, minutes. Hi, um, I'm speaking against the amendment um, 68 for lot 891 from Parks and Recreation to City Centre. Uh, firstly, I must say that the way information on this amendment was presented to the public leaves a lot to be desired. I would be surprised if 10% of Bunbury citizens know about this amendment. If the answer to this is you did all you are legally obliged to do, then in my opinion the law also leads a lot to be desired. 
This amendment has the potential to bring about a massive upheaval to our coastal strip and there should be the opportunity for vigorous and widespread debate, not slipping it through council with nearly a whimper. I have grave concerns over this amendment. If we leave aside for the moment the fact that it's a proposal to commercialise a beauty spot with magnificent sweeping views of Geograph Bay, we are left with some land that someday someone may turn into a commercial entity. This amendment does not come with a plan. It does not even come with an idea. The road configuration is in the air. The engineering required to build on a huge sand hill is in the air. The concerns for local residents are not yet being considered and the submissions of other utilities are the bureaucratic equivalent of no comment. As for height restrictions, we are informed it may be 21 metres, but nobody is really sure. Certainly nobody is prepared to commit to that as there has never been a height restriction in this area. The argument for this amendment seems to be, trust us, we know what's best for the community. Leave it to the local development plan, which seems to equate to the will of the council. If this amendment is allowed, the checks and balances that the land, this land currently enjoys will be taken away, giving to this council, future councils and state governments a blank check, leaving Bunbury residents with little to no say in any future developments along the coastal area. If there are no plans to enhance Lot 891 as parks and recreation, and you have no concrete development plans that you can show to residents so they can debate them, it would be eminently better to leave the land as it is, as you have done to my knowledge for the last 40 years. Past councils have made development mistakes, but only when forced into action by the state government or when they ignored their own planning restrictions or when they rejected town planning advice. The only way a development should be considered for this stunning outlook, if development is what we must have, is to present a proposal to the public, get their approval and then change the zoning. Rezoning lot 891 to city centre represents or presents a fait accompli to the community and is not what the good people of Bunbury deserve. If this amendment is passed, there will be little or no opportunity in community input and, and this important site warrants vigorous community involvement. This amendment is putting the cart before the horse and for no apparent reason. Could it be that once this precedent is set, other developers would demand the same consideration for their waterfront properties? Is this a backdoor plan for getting unrestricted development along our coastal strip? Thank you. Is there a mover? Uh, the executive from Councillor Hayward. Beg your pardon? Oh, I've got it on the um, request there. It's in, it's in Clifton Street, number four. Councillor Hayward moves. Is there a second up? Councillor McGuinness. Councillor Hayward. Uh, thank you very much. This is a uh, is an absolute prime piece of land. There's no question about it. And... Uh, it has been, uh, as we know, was part of a deal that the council did do in relation to um, a land swap with the state government. It has been a, a, a reserve, um, and it largely is a sand dune which is grassed. Uh, and I believe that it, it will be, in terms of a development opportunity, a absolutely magnificent, uh, a real gem for Bunbury in terms of what potentially could go there. It is difficult to uh, know what what could happen there in the future. Obviously, there's a process which will be run through which will include uh, public consultation at that point, which is the uh, appropriate way for it to move forward. Uh, I think uh, we've, it's been on our radar for some time. There has been some uh, public consultation. The, the newspapers have done stories about this as well. It's not something that's just come out of the blue. And uh, I would urge you to support it. I think it'll be great for Bunbury. Thank you. Councillor McGuinness. Uh, only, only just to... Uh, echo Councillor uh, Hayward's remarks and uh, I think that we really need to uh, be aware of moving forward with development for our city. I think this is prime prime real estate. I think that as part of the process, as uh, Councillor Hayward said, we do need to be aware of environmental concerns and concerns uh, regarding building on this parcel of land. But uh, as part of an ongoing development for our city, I wholeheartedly support that and I think that um, 
concerns of our residents and, and those sort of things can be taken into account as we move further through the process. So I urge people to support the, the motion as it stands. Speaker against. I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, councillors, we move on. Uh, 13.2. Councillor Steck is not here. Do you have responses to that question? Yeah, I do. Yep. Please. I'll refer to the CEO. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Steck put five questions on notice. In relation to question one, uh, council does not receive any rent rates or taxes on the land identified. Therefore, in question two, it's not applicable as council is not receiving any income. We have sought clarification from Councillor Steck regarding her question. Uh, question three, however, as the report referred to is from an external consultant, uh, report referred to by the applicant and answer is still required from them to enable a formal response. Question four, again, council does not receive any rent rates or taxes on the land identified. Therefore, five, not applicable as we do not receive any income from the land. Yeah, I'd like to ask a question, ask the CEO to identify where these lots are, please. Uh, three, three, Mr Mayor. One of, one of the lots is the uh, within the car park on the, um, I guess, the northern side of Centre Point Sterling in the um, flat at grade car park in that area. The other one is uh, around near the Paisley Centre. They're just small parcels of land contained within other parcels on the development site. Thank you. We move on. Number 14, item 14, council. Is someone prepared to move that we agree to accept this item as an urgent nature? Yeah. Councillor Hayward, seconder. Councillor Giles, all in favour? It's carried. Um, someone prepared to move the executive recommendation? Councillor <laughs> Jones, Councillor McGuill. Uh, I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Right, well, this is a record for me. Um, I declare this meeting closed at 8.27. Councillors, thank you so much for your, um, your diligence and your passion and the, conduct, the way you conducted yourselves tonight. It was fantastic. It was great to see a, um, an audience to physically be in the building to witness how professional this council is about conducting business on behalf of the community. So thank you very much, and uh, I bid you good night. I said the same matter, but I'm 1.5 million from the gun, this looks like a thousand dollars, that's what you